So how much of Fire Emblem is skill versus min-maxing? This is something that I always think about when playing strategy games because it's kind of hard to pinpoint what exactly skill in a strategy game is. Skill, generally speaking, is the ability to do something well. And this wolf down here seems like he is really good at being a wolf, so you could argue his wolf skill is high. But what makes Fire Emblem skill-based, and more importantly, how much of a player's move, like assuming each unit's turn is a move, is skill versus just having the right build, having the right passives, having the right equipment, and so on. Now, in previous Fire Emblem games, it might be the case that the whole game is just strong moves, and it's influenced by randomness insofar as the random growths will influence a character's progression. So a character might, you know, get speed screwed, or strength screwed, or magic screwed. So it removes planning from the player's part by making units randomly pop off, become average, or, you know, become underwhelming. So in this case, we have a Wolf Knight Anna, and she has 11 sword, and she has sword power 3. Now, she can't one round most of these enemies, but if we just do a basic bonded shield setup, and then pass, let's see what she can do. Now, I'm going to do the exact same thing, but I'm going to tweak Anna after this. So this is like the point of this video. All right, so she got a random crit. She killed that guy, that's nice. She has 6%, so that's probably not gonna happen again. So she doesn't do lethal here, but barely. She barely doesn't kill these, which is interesting, right? So she's failing to meet a killing breakpoint. She's barely not dealing enough damage to kill them. Now, obviously there are things we could do to change this, but I'll go into those in a second. So me as the player, I make moves on the board, right? Like, if you ever played chess, you make moves on the board, and your moves are what determine your victory. There is no min-maxing, so arguably, if tactical skill, like, in terms of making moves, is a skill, and not just, like, memorization or puzzle solving, which it's kind of fuzzy, like, what the skill actually is, because you could consider, like, chess skill just, like, knowledge with mixture, like, mixed with experience. Uh, but... She's failing to one round, right? Clearly, like she's not one rounding these. She didn't double this. She is two points shy of doubling this. So now let's min max her. Let's retry. We'll go to Somniel. We'll do a few things. We'll do a few basic things. We're just gonna, we're gonna play the exact same opening moves, right? But we're going to just alter Anna now. We're going to You'll see. We'll, we'll do some things. And this, this is why I constantly think about, like, how skill-based is this game? Am I making good moves or just my build's good? Is it just, like, the setups I'm using? So let's go to Somniel. First things first, her Byleth bond level is 1. Right out of the gate. Get her bond level 10, that's, like, plus 2 magic more, potentially. I think it caps at plus 3 magic, but it also gives more speed. So that right there, like just using this random external resource, Bond Fragments, we can now take Anna and boost her speed up. Right, first, let me make sure I have enough fragments. All right, I do. So we'll go over here, this random thing, this extra new system that's outside of the actual gameplay of making moves. This is like a management thing, right? You're handing this unit, you know, a resource, in this case, the Byleth Ring, which do emblem training, Anna. Here she is. All right, Anna. So we can get, you know, her bond level up. So let's get bond level 10. We start with bond level five and then we'll get bond level 10 afterwards. And we'll see what this does to her damage. No need to be shy. Just this is probably enough to get her one rounding those armors. And it should give her plus one speed. Plus one more speed than she's getting normally. So it might, it'll get her one more speed closer to killing those archers or at least doubling those archers. And when you're evaluating positions, if you if you just know that your builds are good, it can greatly it can greatly like influence your success, you know. So just by knowing, like, okay, this build is very fast, it has really high damage. I can stick this here with bondage shield and I'll just farm. Uh, that also is like arguably, you know, not high skill in a way. 
because you don't have to like calculate. Like if we assume skill and fire emblem is like calculation under pressure, then things like this reduce that dramatically. All right, let's see what kind of stats she has now. I think she was plus one speed and plus one magic. So bond level 10. She has plus two magic and plus two speed. So she gained a speed and she gained a magic. That greatly helps her. Now she's still not doubling those archers. She's still not one rounding those things. But what else can we do? Well, she has a base love sword, so we can forge that. So let's go to the plaza. I might have to sell some stuff or whatever, but. So there's the bond level, that gives you stats. There's the forges, that gives you stats. There's your passives, that gives you stats. There's your class, that gives you stats. The, the point I'm kind of getting to is it seems like Fire Emblem is mostly about stats and builds and almost not about skill at all unless you impose arbitrary challenges on yourself, mm -hmm. at least in most modern Fire Emblem games. And so we can refine. I am light on resources. Maybe we can get it to plus one. All right, so we can get it to plus one. So that's plus one more damage. All right, so she now kills the armors just from a plus 11 plus one. And what I could do is I can convert to silver into steel. So let's do that. Exchange, steel, do two, why not? That's refine. All right, so now we can get it to plus four. So now she definitely one rounds those armors. And then, you know what? Let's get her an extra speed. Let's get her... Now that we've improved the damage so much, I don't really mind if we reduce the damage by one. Let's reduce the damage by one, but also the weight by one. She now doubles the archers. And now she has plus 30 avoid and hit. So she's basically here. guaranteed to hit. So, all right, let's look at her magic stat too, because it's not even that high. So with this build, she probably one rounds... So those dudes, so she doubles the archers now without even using tonics. But let's, let's take it a step further. Let's take it a step further. And this isn't even like changing classes, which I could also do to give her plus more magic on Mage Knight. Let's just, let's tonic her. Let's get just like a speed to magic tonic. That's it. I thank you. 300 gold. I thank you. All right, let's use these on her. Do come again. So speed. This is a temporary boost. All right, now let's see what the result is. So the exact same, we're gonna use the exact same opening move too. And let's just see what forging, engraving, and bond level like gives us. It's the exact same move. This is, this is I think, an issue to be honest. I think min-maxing plays too much of a role in the core gameplay loop where, like if you're, if you're new to the game, you know, you can lean on it a little bit and it'll help you. But I feel like the game should reward skillful play, and it kind of doesn't in a lot of ways. It doesn't really reward calculation. It really rewards good builds, and it really punishes using units in any kind of aggressive way if they have the wrong build. So like if you want to be aggressive with a unit, they have to have like an insanely tanky build, because generally speaking, enemies are like overlap so that if you go attack an enemy position, there's other enemies just within range to attack you if you don't canter out of range. There's like all these really, really weird things. All right, but if you look at the speeds now, she doubles all that stuff now, especially even without the tonic, just from this engraving, this is enough to get her doubling these things. All right. So we can engage, we can bonded. You got it. And stick Anna out here. All right, now let's see what happens. Exact same play, same level, just changed. Okay, they're attacking me now. <laughs> I need to get dual assist. All right, now she one rounds them. The exact same play though. Now she one rounds. She one rounds the armors. All right, those ones didn't attack. She doubles and one rounds the archer now. Now how can we make this even better? So, so it's not even like, like I'm not necessarily improving right now. I don't- I haven't made a different move. I've just improved my character using min-maxing. And this is- I made a video on this a while ago, where I just talked about the effects of min-maxing and how it influences the game. And it was received very poorly. Like, some people were like, oh, well, you know, it's a single-player game. There's always this argument like, oh, it's a single-player game, who cares? It's like, but a well-balanced game is more fun. Like, if you actually can improve at something, 
there's like a journey like you actually start from you know like like doom eternal is a f relatively balanced game from what i understand like fairly balanced so if you play doom eternal on the highest setting and you're bad at the game you have to improve now you will improve at fire emblem as you play it on the highest setting but i would say the best thing to tackle the highest setting are the builds like the builds completely make or break your success more so than player skill so just by changing a few things and right now a is getting attacked okay well how can i avoid that well <laughs> i can make a leer higher dodge so that this doesn't attack a leer and then this attacks and then dies this attacks and then dies and then this attacks and then dies off of bondage shield so right now a leer is 65 avoid but if you're going to be a bonder you should have you know high avoid so in this case, Alir really should have like a Makai engraved weapon and then dual assist, or I'm sorry, yeah, dual assist, dual assist, yeah, no, 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 dual support, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just need to get my bond level to eight or to uh, 13, so let's check this out now. Oops, I didn't turn. I meant to leave. Looks like we're tanking. <laughs> we're tanking without doing anything. And I made us money. All right, people are going to die because I passed turn there. All right, let's get back. Cool. So let's get Alir the Vaughn level. Let's see what changes. So once you get the high Vaughn level, well actually I can, I can tell you what changes. I'll, I'll be a too avoidant for them to reasonably attack and they'll switch to Ana. So that's, that's what would happen. Uh, but essentially what would change is just by having the right setup, the exact same move of moving two units and using Bonded Shield can completely wipe out an entire enemy squad versus if my unit isn't min-maxed enough, the exact same move isn't as effective. And I think that's a real problem with Fire Emblem in general, is that it doesn't really reward good moves as much as it rewards min-maxing. I would say the min-maxing is like 70, maybe even 80% of the results, and then the actual player input, the player moves, are like 20, at most 30% of the results. So like in terms of like actual effort, if you just have the right builds and know what you like what these builds do and what they're supposed to be going for, you will see success in this game. Whereas if you make strong moves, if you have terrible units, it doesn't matter how strong the moves are, you are lacking in stats, you're gonna deal not enough damage to kill, you're not gonna be doubling, you're gonna have low crit chances, like you're not just gonna be You're not you're gonna put in a ton of mental effort for no payout. Whereas with good builds, you can put in little mental effort for huge payout. And I think that's an issue with Fire Emblem and on its highest setting currently. Now, there are ways that players can mitigate this by imposing challenges or banning certain mechanics like, oh, you can't use Bonded Shield or no Goddess Dance or don't use the Dancer or whatever, you know, no forging, no Somnial, stuff like this. And that can improve the skill requirement. Now, one thing that is a step in the right direction is fixed mode. Now, I know people, some people love random mode, but in terms of making the game skill-based and reproducible, so that when we're talking about a unit, it's not nonsense, fixed mode is objectively the, one of the best things that can happen for the game. Because there's so many times on random mode where I've been doing like some kind of stream, you know, of some older Fire Emblem, and it's on random mode, and I'll have like quote unquote F tier, D tier units pop off, get a bunch of strength, get strength and speed capped and become insane. And then people are like, what? Holy crap, that unit's not supposed to be good. And it's like, exactly. <laughs> this is why random is a problem because some people will use that unit. It'll get no strength ever, deal no damage and be useless and need to be benched. Whereas other people use that unit and you know maybe 10% of them, that unit pops off and now you have 90% of people who had a bad experience with the unit and then 10% of people who had a great experience with the unit But then add in like let's say this game was random growth. So you add in Emblems you add in passives you add in tonics you add in all these little systems that interact with the unit, the piece you're moving and all of a sudden you have this huge issue Where no one can really agree like certain people can test some things like very few people are gonna pick up you know the game and do a new like a fresh save test a unit from start to finish using the same build you did and verify the results because that's a lot of work like very few people are going to do that and i don't expect them to either so like if someone is like oh tamara's bad or whatever like if i can prove she's good 
with like low SP. Like even this build, this is kind of a spoiler. This is gonna be her Ike build. She's at 70 crit, and once she gets Wrath after doing these Paralogs, she's gonna be 100 crit. And then once she gets Lance Power, she can just get Lance Power 2. That's probably all she'll need. So like Lance Power 2, and she'll roll for Sandstorms. So she'll have like 80 to 100 crit, and she'll be rolling for Sandstorms. So she should be really good, if I did my math correctly. But there's all these different builds you can make, and the builds, honestly, are more important than the player skill. It, we're definitely at a point where that's true. The only time this isn't true is when you're doing some challenge run, but that's going out of your way to play the game in a different manner than was intended. So like if you like ban Somniel, the developers intended on you using Somniel. That's why it's in the game. So you could argue like, oh, well, you know, LTC or super efficient plays, more skill based. Uh, it could be. From what I understand, there's a lot of like rigging crits and a lot of like rigging meals and things like this. There's usually there's usually some kind of like pack that people do where instead of like being super mechanically gifted or super strategically gifted at the game or just, you know, having the skill, it's just like there's like some workaround. That's what I found for most of these games. It, like even this is a perfect example. It's like this is like a serious problem. There's a lot of enemies, there's armored enemies, there's archers. Well, I'll just use Love and Sword Bonded Shield and kill them all. <laughs> it's like, it's like that's just like a workaround to this problem of like actually dealing with these. It's it's just like a, a hammer and these are a bunch of nails and it just hammers them all in. And like there's no like, oh, we can break the wall, uh, kill two of the armors, freeze the third, and then silence the... Like they're, they're, you don't do that. You don't play like that. No one plays like that. The main reason is it's too expensive in terms of gold to play like that, like to use like two silences or something in order to do that, or like to use freeze staff, like there's limited use of freeze staff and silence, and it'd be expensive to rely on that as a primary strategy. So like the actual tools to like shut enemies down are paywalled, not like with real money, but with like in-game gold. And also there's like a finite amount of freezes, a finite amount of silences and so on. So like if you were to like do this kind of push in and attack this position, you could do that and it would be effective if you built your units correctly. But uh, it'd be expensive and inefficient when you could just take two units, use Bonded Shield, kill them all for free. Or even just take like a tank, like just take a tank that can one to two range. Now it's hard to one to two range armors, I will say that. Usually that's like a Bonded Shield setup. Armors are like one of the harder things to one to two range. Now you can one range them with like an Armor Slayer or something on like a tank, but it'd be difficult to get rid of them. But other units usually are easy to one to two range. So yeah, that's it for this one. I just want to talk about the skill in the game and then just show an example of what basic min-maxing can do to a situation. Now, if we wanted to... Let's see. The one guy, he attacked with a spear here. We could probably... Here, let's try a different opening. Slightly different. I want to get as many kills as I can, but I don't want, I don't want him to body block those other armors. So we want... Yeah, she she goes here. Let's see what this gets us. Like even just like adjusting the position slightly is usually enough to drastically change the result. Now, if, if I was such high avoid, they don't target. All right, so this should be melted. But this is like the perfect example of how like a basic tactic solves the positional problem instead of like actually using your units in a way or using abilities in a way where you're coordinating attacks and planning things. Like, it's very rare, even in, like, LTC strategies, it seems like most of it, especially endgame, it's just, like, warp skipping. All right, they're going for... <laughs> they're going for me because they can hit me. That's why you need that Makai engraving on your bonder. Plus the uh, dual support, which you can just get bond 13. So I just have to get my bond level up to get that avoid higher. But you can see the result, though. Like, instead of having this elaborate play, uh, she can just kill this archer this turn. She can just start attacking things. Then we can bonded her again, heal, heal this, body block here, using Jade, probably. Yeah, she can just sit here. So something basic like this, just heal this. And then if I wanted to, I could probably even kill the archer. Let's see if he can master this. He needs Mulajir. Yeah, if he had Mulajir, he would, he'd be killing here. All right, let's just move these guys. All right, let's see what they do. Just curious. 
Okay, good. They're going for Anna. That one has a melee weapon, though. I think the archer shoots. Hopefully the axe goes first, because the archer will just waste a turn. But you can see how dumb just having high enough stats is. <laughs> like, now that she has the stats for this, she can just one round all these things that fight her. And then Tamara, she would have to sandstorm. Okay, she sandstorm critted for 21. She usually has Ike equipped, so... She's, she shouldn't be hitting hard against armors on a killer lance. Yeah, he's going to shoot me. Anna also has higher avoid, so they're going to ignore her to some degree. I could put Erica engraving on her. But that doesn't reduce weight. All right, looks like Jade got crit. <laughs> and then they might kill me. No, that, yeah, they did. All right. So, I, I honestly, I usually put Tamara there. She's better at fighting the horses. She doesn't get doubled. But... Yeah, you can see how just like getting a bond level, like just basic things. Like also imagine I do like Lynn Paralog next, get her speed plus five. Now she's doubling everything. I never would need to use Tonic. She's, she's fast enough. And then do Byleth Paralog, get her another plus one speed and magic. So then she's plus three on both and then plus 10 luck, which triggers her passive more often, which makes me more money. Like you can just like snowball the hell out of like your economy and your unit strength with basic min maxing. She's on a Wolf Knight, by the way. This isn't her on Mage Knight. She's one rounding on Wolf Knight with 11 sword. That's crazy. That's so stupid. <laughs> All right, so that's it for this one. I just wanted to go over these, like the skill requirement in the game. This is something I think about a lot where it's like, am I actually good at the game? Is anyone actually good at the game? Is it just min maxing? It really seems to be the case that it's like mostly min maxing. Even like, if you want to play quickly, you always use the best units. Like you always use like Ivy and Kigetsu and Pandreo and things like this. And you basically just lean on the best things at all times. So it's like, give the best units, the best resources at all times for a reason. It, tri it reduces the difficulty of the game. So it seems to be the case that most of the influence over your success is from knowledge rather than skill. I think this game is like 20% skill, 80% knowledge, to be honest. Because, like, anyone can just park two units in a place in Bonded Shield. But if you have, you know, the Makai engraving instead of Leaf on this weapon, and then you have the Bond level 13 for the dual supports, so that, and then the A rank support, so he gets plus 20 more avoid, they would always attack Anna. But because her avoid's higher, they're going to prioritize Alir now. So it's, like, the wrong thing. Like, basically, she should have a different... She could have, like, Sigurd engraving, and then this could be Lucina. That'd probably be fine. That gets him to avoid 95, and then with dual support, he's like avoid 110, 115 or so. Uh, so yeah, thanks for checking this out. Definitely subscribe if you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.